everybody. Today I will talk about MariaDB as a service, specifically about data clustering, about vertical and horizontal scaling within the Elastic Platform as a service. My name is Ruslan. I am co-founder and CEO of the Elastic Multi-Cloud Platform as a Service. Our platform was designed for developers to simplify their daily life while provisioning new services, configuring them, creating complex topologies for load balancing, availability, as well as con for configuring complex continuous integration and delivery pipelines. So, at my presentation, I would love to talk about downtimes and how to avoid these downtimes, what kind of functionality um, people introduced and specifically Jolastic offers for its customers. So, and why uh, this issue is important? Because when downtime uh, happens, companies lose money. There is a statistic uh, how much money large companies lose per minute, per hour. So, but it's not only about money, it's also about the reputation. You lose existing customers, they become unhappy, and you lose potential customers. So, downtimes are really bad. But also, um, there is another problem. Uh, it's not an easy to avoid downtimes if you use standalone installations. You need to configure clusters uh, for high availability and also for disaster recovery, for example. But such kind of Topologies, uh, they are complex to configure and specifically to maintain in the future, to do software updates um, during uh, application lifecycle. So, to solve this problem, many companies that specifically develop databases, uh, they move to database as a service uh, direction. And Jolastic as a platform and service uh, moved to this direction as well. And there is a simple comparison how much work you need to do if you host MariaDB on premises, right? You, you must do everything by yourself. And when you host MariaDB on infrastructure service platform, so infrastructure platforms uh, offer just um, up automation regarding uh, operating system and hardware maintenance. And then if you host MariaDB on Jelasic platform as a service, it gives you much more automation, so it releases your time, it releases your efforts, and you can focus on other things, on your business logic, right? So, and there is, you can see the list of uh, functionality Jolastic offers by default for every customer. So, but this is uh, designed for self-managed service, let's say, right? You can also request manage it MariaDB on top of Jolastic platform and service, and one of the certified Jolastic uh, providers will be able to offer fully managed service for you. So let's uh, talk a little bit about what kind of automation Jolastic offers out of the box when you do self-manage it, uh, when you use um, portal for developers, for example. So we take here, specifically I want to focus on high availability configurations for, on configurations for automatic horizontal scaling, as well as vertical scaling, and some optimizations of the default configuration. So all these tasks we do automatically for you. And we will talk a little bit more today how we perform these configurations and how we deliver this automation for you. So, but a little bit more about uh, Jolastic partners around the world. Uh, Jolastic, uh, we are, as a company, we are a software company. We focus on development of uh, our software platform. We collaborate with uh, many hosting service providers around the world, and we enable them to deliver modern cloud services, modern automation uh, uh, to different local markets. Today, Jolastic uh, is available in more than 100 data centers, and we collaborate with more than 60 different service providers. So our network is growing almost uh, every week. And uh, specifically about MariaDB, we love MariaDB, uh, and our customers love MariaDB. MariaDB has the second place among the other uh, databases. Uh, it's pretty popular um, within Jolastic uh, user base. Uh, now coming back specifically to how it works uh, within Jolastic. Uh, at the screenshot, you see uh, the topology wizard, uh, where you can choose MariaDB as a certified container runtime. So you can choose different versions here. And there is a one button, uh, when you enable this button, uh, the platform will switch on auto clustering mode for you. 
and you will be able to choose different replication schemes. Um, there are three replication schemes um, that supported for um, MariaDB. Uh, standard one like Master Slave, Master Master, and Galera. There is also possibility to increase number of resources available per each container, right? And there is also possibility to increase number of containers. So, in other words, um, this reflects vertical scaling, and this button reflects horizontal scaling. Now, talking about master slave replication, when uh, a customer creates um, MariaDB master slave uh, scheme, uh, by default we provision two master nodes. Oh, sorry, two, two nodes. One of them master, and another slave, and two proxy SQL servers for load balancing your SQL queries. And we do some uh, configurations by default. You can see the list of parameters we tune for you. It's possible to adjust these parameters uh, afterward. With master master, we also create two nodes, uh, but uh, two of them are working in the master mode. And also, there are two proxy SQLs uh, servers for load balancing your SQL queries. And you can see the list of uh, configs we configure by default for you. Uh, with Galera cluster, we create three containers, three nodes by default, and two proxy SQLs. And there is, uh, there is a list of configurations we um, provide by default. Let's talk a little bit more in details about vertical and horizontal scaling. Uh, I love vertical scaling very much. I believe it's underestimated. Uh, I mean, the power of vertical scaling is underestimated. So, but what it means when I talk about vertical scaling? It means you can easily increase uh, available resources per each instance, per each container. So, remember, we run MariaDB instances inside uh, isolated system containers. So, and you can ad adjust uh, the limits on the fly. You don't need to migrate or you don't need to restart your container. And also, we provide additional automation um, reconfiguring parameters, uh, such as k-buffers uh, and caches. So, uh, after you adjust the limit, the scaling limit, uh, we need to adjust also MariaDB instance. Otherwise, MariaDB will not be able to utilize all these available resources. So, we do it automatically for you. Please keep in mind it's possible to switch off this automation and uh, configure manually. But in the majority of cases, it works just fine. Let's talk about the difference while scaling virtual machines and containers vertically. Um, for example, if you go to an uh, infrastructure service and you buy virtual machine, right, like so, and during some period of time, you, after some period of time, you realized you reserve it uh, too small, um, limits, let's say, uh, what, what you need to do, like there are two issues. First of all, you need to buy, in the most cases, twice bigger machine. Because the majority of infrastructure service vendors, they do not offer you very granular vertical scaling. So they force you to buy twice bigger amount of resources. And second issue, you cannot just add uh, new resources to the same virtual machine. You must migrate uh, instance from the existing one to a new one. So there is a manual work behind this vertical scaling, which is not very convenient way to scale your MariaDB instance vertically. Uh, if you scale containers specifically with Elastic, there is a possibility to increase and decrease uh, scaling limit on the fly. You don't need to do anything else. I mean, like migrating to another container. Um, yeah, like, or buy like twice bigger uh, amount of resources, you can uh, add as much as you need specifically. So it's very flexible, it's much cheaper and faster to scale MariaDB with containers. And another advanced and very powerful functionality and feature um, we call pay-per-use billing model. And it's so powerful, many customers love it, and as soon as they realize how it works, uh, they, they relax and they keep using Jolastic even more, uh, start using Jolastic even more. So how it works? Uh, for example, when you go again like to infrastructure service, uh, you buy virtual machine, let's say like 16 gigabyte of RAM, right? Uh, but in the most cases, you don't utilize everything uh, because you buy a little bit insurance just in case if more load is coming to your instance. So your instance uh, should have some um, capacity to grow up. 
And um, also another issue, many customers, they use like their stage environment. And in these environments, uh, resources just idling. So you don't utilize them. And it means there are a lot of resources that just underutilized. Uh, and you, but it does not matter. You always pay for the limits. Um, this model is called like pay as you go. Why pay as you go? Because when you run your virtual machine, when it's running, you pay, but it's regardless of the consumption inside. When you stop, you don't pay. So it means like pay as you go, pay as you run. But since Elastic, uh, we introduced new different model, which we called next generation and uh, cloud native pricing. Uh, and it works in the following way. You can set scaling limit, but if you don't utilize up to the scaling limit, you only pay for the amount of resources your instance consumes. Uh, we believe it's much fair and it's more flexible uh, billing model for end customers. So it gives two uh, main benefits. First of all, you save money um, for resources you don't consume. And the second, uh, it solves right sizing problem. You don't to need to, you don't need to guess in advance how much resources to order per each container. Just imagine if you have many environments, if you have many containers, it's very hard to predict in advance what the load will be during the time. So with Synge Elastic, this problem is just solved because you set high scaling limit for your MariaDB instance, and that's it. Uh, if MariaDB is consuming this, you pay. If it doesn't consume, you, you, don't, you don't pay. Very easy and flexible. Good. Let's talk now about horizontal scaling, how it works uh, with Synge Elastic. Uh, we're coming back to this uh, topo topology wizard. And you can see there is a plus and minus button. So it means you can uh, remove or add new instances with MariaDB. And the good point, uh, these instances will be automatically to added to your um, cluster. Depending on your scheme, uh, if you work like uh, master slave, it will add more slaves. If you work like master master, uh, it will add more slaves as well and connect them to the masters. If you work in Galera mode, it will add more masters. And there is interesting, another interesting um, drop-down, like uh, mode for scaling. Uh, it's possible to choose stateless or stateful scaling mode. What it means? It means uh, stateless mode, when you scale in stateless mode, we create new empty container with uh, empty um, MariaDB instance. And then you need to configure if you do it manually, actually, uh, clustering manually. Um, but in Elastic, it's, it's automated, but just for your understanding. So it's empty container, and you need to configure replication, and data will go through replication to this new container. Uh, in stateful mode, we clone master node uh, with whole data inside, and it just connects this to um, your cluster afterward. So it's much, uh, let's say, the data will be in this new container. So this is the difference between stateful and stateless um, uh, scaling. Let's talk now about specific details, how it works uh, per each schema. schema. Um, let's talk about master-slave, automatic horizontal scaling. Um, when customer uh, press a plus button and we add uh, automatically new node, we but first of all, we drop uh, one slave from proxy SQL uh, load balancing distribution list. So then we stop the slave and we clone the, sta the slave in a stateful mode. So we clone with the whole data. Then we start the original slave and return the slave to the proxy SQL load uh, balancing uh, list. Then we uh, adjust configurations of the recently created uh, slave node. Uh, specifically, we adjust server ID and report host, and we launch this new slave and add this to the proxy SQL schemas. And as soon and then, as soon as all transactions are applied to the new slave, uh, proxy SQL will distribute uh, the request to this new node as well. So this is in short how it works. Um, you can find the link in, uh, to the logic, to the source code of this logic, so you, you will be able to analyze by yourself how it works. Good. Uh, master, master, um, how it works, automatic horizontal scaling. Uh, first of all, uh, we drop uh, second master from the proxy distribution list. Uh, so only one master works uh, if you have only two nodes. And then uh, we clone, uh, we stop the master and we clone this master in stateful mode as well with the whole data inside. Then 
in similar, similar to the previous um, algorithm, we start the second master and return the this to the proxy SQL load balancing uh, distribution list. We reconfigure cloned node as a new slave, and then we launch this new slave and uh, add this to proxy SQL list. Uh, and uh, after this, uh, this new slave will be able to um, handle new requests. If you scale more nodes, I mean, if you add more nodes horizontally, we add uh, new slaves only in these uh, schemas. And but these slaves will be connected proportionally to every master node. So, for example, if you have four slaves, two of them will be connected to one master, and two of them will be connected to another master. Uh, please feel free to analyze the logic, to, uh, which you can find uh, under this um, link. Now let's talk about the uh, Galera cluster automatic horizontal scaling. Um, when customer press plus button, we create new node in a stateless mode. So we create a new empty container with empty MariaDB. Then we pre-configure some parameters and we add the, uh, this node to the cluster. And we also add this node to proxy SQL, but without distribution. So as soon as um, all data is synchronized through the state snapshot transfer, uh, and as soon as the synchronization is complete, proxy SQL will include this node into the distribution list. So, and this node will be able to handle new requests. If you add more nodes, it will work in the same way. But we were talking about when you press plus button manually. It's possible to uh, add more automation uh, to your cluster uh, with auto horizontal scaling uh, uh, triggers, uh, thresholds, let's say. For this, you need to go to settings of your environments and um, switch to auto horizontal scaling tab, and you will see uh, there are different uh, thresholds based on uh, CPU, memory, network, and disk. You can specify when to add new node. For example, based on CPU, when the load is more than 85%, please add one more node. And please remove this node when load is go down below 35%. It's just an example. So you can fine-tune these parameters and configure fully automated horizontal scaling. Please keep in mind, after this new node will be added, all logic, all automation I just described previously will be applied uh, automatically for you. So you don't need to do uh, anything, uh, actually. In addition to automatic horizontal scaling, there are um, useful load alerts um, we configure by default for you uh, just to let you know when load is coming close to the limits. Uh, we configure load alerts for CPU, memory, disk, uh, and inodes as well, and network. So you can adjust this default uh, load alerts or you can add your customs. It's very useful, again, to understand uh, maybe like you, you, don't, you did not configure uh, horizontal scaling for some reason, right? Uh, or you want to get alert when the, it's coming close to horizontal scaling. So feel free to use this uh, useful uh, functionality. But also, we take care about OEM kills, because sometimes uh, OEM kills happens. Uh, when it happens, when load inside the containers is coming close to the available um, limits, I mean, as well to the, limit, to the limits of available memory, right? And uh, then system will kill instance of MariaDB. So what we do in this case? First of all, we adjust configurations. So if you use our default configs, I mean, um, autopilot mode, let's say, then our system will automatically reduce a little bit uh, in ODB buffer pool size, like on 10%, and then restart MariaDB instance and uh, see how it goes. Like, if another OM kill happens, then it will repeat the same exercise. So it will reduce a little bit um, in ODB buffer pool size. So in, in such way, we want to avoid any OM kills. So you can adjust uh, how much uh, per each step to reduce uh, through specific uh, parameters, let's say, right? Um, specific environment variables. Or if you don't like it for some reason, you, you can just enable auto configurations at all.
So, but I, I do recommend to use this out of pilot mode. Extra functionality for extra protection, for extra high ability, anti-affinity rules. When you create two nodes or in the same environment of MariaDB, we don't place them on the same physical box. We distribute them across our infrastructure. So we put this MariaDB into different host nodes. Uh, it means when one host node fails, uh, your cluster will keep working because uh, there is still um, one node is available. By the way, if you create like five nodes, it will work in the same way. Like if if uh, cluster, I mean, if there are five physical nodes behind uh, on the main cluster of uh, your cloud service provider, every instance will be placed into a separate uh, physical node. So in this way, we ensure extra protection for your environment. For the most advanced people and for the most demanding who want to do extra configurations, for who want to attach custom logic uh, while uh, scaling, Jelastic offers events, different events. You can attach your custom logic to these events. You can see what kind of events we have. Uh, you can go to the documentation page and review how it works. Um, the logic should be written with help of cloud scripting. It's pretty simple declarative language. Uh, but you can also adjust, uh, inject uh, JavaScript language, uh, Java uh, scripting, let's say, yeah, and uh, create extra logic for you. So call extra APIs or even call um, some SSH commands and do some extra logic inside the nodes. So very useful. We actually use this functionality to configure our auto clustering logic. Great. Um, however, you know, like sometimes cluster within one data center is not enough because uh, huge disasters uh, unfortunately happens. And recently, as we know, one data center of OVH was completely burned out. Like, you know, like it, it, it lost a lot of data and a lot of customers were damaged. It's a very serious issue, right? Like, unfortunately, again, like nobody can be like protected for some, for, from such kind of uh, disasters um, because like maybe it's like human mistake, like, or I don't know, like maybe some um, hardware did not work well. So, but how we can help our customers to be even more protected? For this, we offer and we do recommend to use multi-region and multi-cloud deployments. And uh, it's, it's not easy, honestly, to configure clusters in different regions, but still, Jelastic offers um, simplicity to deploy into different uh, regions, to different clouds, and manage in the same way with the same API. Um, your clusters in different uh, regions, uh, in different data centers. So you get real full interoperability. But even more to get to make life of developers and DevOps team uh, even more easier, we work on advanced automa automation, on advanced packages that can deploy clusters into different regions and configure synchronization between these regions. For example, here you can see like uh, multi-region deployment of WordPress clusters. It works in the following way. Like we deploy WordPress cluster, uh, which includes Maria DB Galera cluster inside into three different regions. And then we configure uh, synchronization and uh, replication between these uh, Galera DB instances across all regions. So if one region goes down, your application will, steep, uh, will uh, keep um, handling requests. So in Jelastic, uh, such kind of complexity is hidden behind one click button, literally. So you just choose a package, uh, you choose regions, you press button deploy, and then you enjoy. For the most demanding customers, there is a possibility to adjust and fine-tune configurations, but for the majority of customers, it just works fine. So that was in short about MariaDB with Elastic. Uh, if you have more questions or any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to contact me via social media or just send message to info at gelastic.com. Uh, but also, I suggest you to try by yourself and play by yourself and get familiar how will MariaDB clustering and horizontal and vertical scaling works in Elastic. Please sign up at this page, uh, try it out, and let us know what you think. Thank you very much. Be safe 
and I hope to see you soon in person at some conference. Um, yeah. Bye bye. Great presentation, Ruslan. Thank you. Thank you too. I think it was very convincing. At some points, I thought it was a bit too good to be true because most things were automatic. And while I think that's good uh, as a user, I will be tempted into a state where I don't understand the lo under underlying logic. Everything is automatic anyway. So given that this and that is automated, uh, what is left to do manually? Okay, very good question. So um, you still need to uh, think about your backup for now, like, right, right. So it's coming in the near future, uh, but for now you need to like uh, uncomment some scripts and you will backup uh, the system. Also, you need to do upgrades to a new version. Uh, so you need to at least initiate, we have automation for this, but you need to initiate upgrades. We don't upgrade automatically. Upgrades of MariaDB server, you mean, or? Yeah, like I mean, uh, upgrade of MariaDB version, like software version, like yeah. MariaDB server. So what what else? Um, I don't know. It's mostly like um, ah, optimize uh, for your specific application because it really really depends on your application. So you right. need to tune some configs. Like we we cannot do like magic for everyone. Of course, and that, that's that was the root of my question. So uh, like yeah. the settings, uh, I saw there were some settings that you displayed in your in your video. So what are the most important settings? Yeah, uh, of course, buffer uh, cache, let's say. So we configure it based on available memory. Uh, so more memory you give, more buffer you, you get. Like, But you, you can adjust it based on, on your needs. Like, so, and, yeah. and the rest, actually, you need to go and deep dive. Like In the future, we are planning extra automation when we learn based on the load patterns during the time. And then we update this configs, but it's not available yet. So for, for the next releases, let's say. So let's say that I have, I'm on the settings page and that's, that's a bunch of numbers. How do I uh, get help in setting them? I mean, I, I can uh, clearly experiment and some of them are somewhat self-explanatory, but, but how, do you have any kind of documentation on this or is everything that can be documented also automated already? So uh, regarding settings uh, related to MariaDB specifically, you need to go to MariaDB website and learn from that website like what, what, what they mean, like, because it's not what we do. Our goal is to automate uh, provisioning and some initial configurations and scaling. But if you want to tune, so please visit MariaDB website and learn uh, uh, um, specific um, settings, let's say like, yeah, mm -hmm. so information regarding specific settings. That's that's how it should be done. Yeah. Or if you don't want to do it or you don't have a time, just send a request to your service provider and they will be happy to help you for sure. Like so they will be able to optimize. One thing that you spent a lot of time on there was horizontal scaling, which is automatic, and vertical scaling, which is sort of also automatic. So how do I pick uh, or how does the system pick when it does uh, horizontal and when it does vertical scaling and, and how do I myself uh, say which which way to scale? Good. So vertical scaling work um, by default automatically up to the limits you set from the beginning. So you set like, okay, like maximum scaling limit vertically, let's say like 16 gigabyte like or like 32 gigabyte, right? So it, it, it will work uh, up to this limit. You can increase this manually after you reach the limit in, in case you need more resources. But the good point here is that you don't need to think in advance about the sizing. So you can go high from the beginning because in Gelastic, you pay for what you use only, literally. Like you, you made that point quite, quite well. I think yeah. that, that made yeah. a lot of sense. Any concluding uh, like 20 second remarks that you wish uh, people to take away? Yeah, so please, uh, when you upgrade, please create a staging environment. Like, so don't upgrade on productions, like play before, you know, like don't, don't apply everything directly on productions, please. So that's very important because we, we see people do it often. Like, so play safely. Makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Ruslan Sinit. Thank you too. Thank you too.